I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Sean G, the COO and co-founder of the Digix Project. Sean, thanks so much for taking the time to come on the show. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you, having from, thank you for having me on the show as well. You're welcome. I'm excited to learn a little bit about the Digix Project. If you could start by giving us more of an understanding on the background of how the project first came to fruition and what was the purpose and the vision and how does it tie into currencies and blockchain? Right, so Digis as a project, we started back in December 2015. Uh, back then, there were not as many cryptocurrencies as there are, as they are today, uh, but the inherent problem of having a volatile cryptocurrency still exists. So back then, the vision was to create a stable asset on a blockchain to give people the currency that not only just has stability, but a real store of value that can withstand the test of time. So back then, we created Digix as a platform to tokenize physical gold and issue gold-backed cryptocurrencies because we believe that precious metal of gold itself is a stable store of value and it will withstand any kind of economic uncertainty. So fast forward over five years, I think the vision and mission has always been the same, which is to democratize the access to precious metal. For anyone out there in the world who has internet connection, can easily get involved with Digix by buying gold-backed cryptocurrencies from us. Mm -hmm. Great. And can we touch a little bit deeper on what is an asset-backed digital gold token? And for people that are new to cryptocurrency, how does that differentiate from Bitcoin? Right. So if you look across the board of cryptocurrencies today, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, and the list goes on, a lot of this cryptocurrency doesn't really hold any physical underlying. In fact, a lot of them are just software code held by the laws of demand and supply, or in some other cases have utility to them, either accessing an ecosystem or using it for payments in a certain kind of network. What physical asset tokens are, which is what we've created, is essentially a token that represents a physical ownership to a physical asset that resides somewhere in the, in the real world. So what we have in Digix is a token called DGX, that represents one gram of physical gold that are held in the vaults here in Singapore as well as in Canada that represents its real underlying ownership. Very interesting. And that was going to lead to my next question. There, So there actually is gold being stored in Singapore and Canada uh, that represents all of the tokens. So if more people purchase the tokens, does the reserve fluctuate? Do you increase your reserves and purchase as people purchase? Or is the reserve the same amount? And you know, how much is in reserve? Right. So at the moment right now, we have about 122 kilograms. Uh, street value for dollar, for dollar sake, it's about $6 million right now today. The supply of these tokens will increase over time as more and more people purchase these gold tokens itself. So it's not a fixed supply. It will increase as there's more demand and there's more uh, requirement for us to create more of these gold tokens. Uh, this gold token was formally launched about two years ago in April of 2018. And ever since then, we've seen about approximately $6 million of demand. It's been circulating on the different cryptocurrency exchanges you can get access to. Uh, but it's not, a, it's not a fixed cap and it will increase over time. Very interesting. And who are the ideal users of these tokens? Is it just people looking to get heavy metals, but in a digital form? Or are there a specific demographics that you see purchasing these tokens specifically? Right. So some of our target audience actually uh, re re allows us to reach out to countries with a little bit more economic uncertainty. Right. So these guys out there are trying to get access to uh, an international class of asset like physical gold but they don't have the ability to access them in their local markets. So the current, the current user base today allows people to actually buy it mainly as a store of value, I would say. Uh, using gold as a form of payment or cross-border remittance is not as prevalent yet as compared to the dollars or any other kind of fiat currency system we have in place right now. Uh, so I would say the main group of audience right now is just the store of value people, mm -hmm. followed by uh, guys who want to trade it as a physical asset. Gold itself is not exactly the most stable in terms of price movements mm. over the last five years. Um, but it has been an upward trend since the start of this year. It's really moved up almost about 20%. If we look at the current price today, it's almost at its all-time high for this year. Um, compared to last year as well, it saw a big jump, a big boost in price. It tapered down a little bit. 
So I believe with all this different kind of like economic uncertainty that's happening around the world, um, with the whole, you know, the virus issue, you have the different kind of US China trade war tensions and even US and Iran, these kind of like news will actually trigger um, a big buying behavior for precious metal across the board, whether it's a crypto form or is it physical gold or is it in the gold back products offered by capital markets. Definitely. And there's a lot of traders and investors that are diversifying uh, and this is a further diversification. So that makes sense. Now, Digix has been around for more than a few years, more than many other cryptocurrency projects, but I believe it's not the only gold-backed uh, asset that is in existence in the cryptocurrency world. Is there a specific competitive advantage or a reason why people choose Digix over other uh, coins and tokens that also are reserved by gold? Right, you're, you're right to say that uh, it's not just the only gold-backed token in town today. Uh, in fact, we have about, I would say, close to five to seven other uh, go-back tokens that have credible market sizes. I think this whole idea of competition validates the concept. Uh, and it definitely gives not just the user, but the business confidence that what we're doing is on the right track. Uh, well, I would say that the main advantage that we have today is the access to partnerships in the entire crypto ecosystem. So we partner with companies who use our go tokens for payments. We partner with companies who use it as a form of collateral borrow lending, uh, and the list goes on and on. So it's about having accessibility. The entire crypto market builds itself on interoperability. And what we have in Digix and the access of all these different uh, partnership networks that we have allows us to actually uh, give our user the access to different services available on the blockchain ecosystem. And your team recently revamped your entire website and the marketplace in which you purchase the gold. Can you talk about uh, how long has this been in the making and what does this mean for the users of Digix now? Right, yeah. So we're extremely excited with the whole launch of this whole new marketplace. Uh, it's been about a year in the making so far. And this marketplace is designed primarily to do two things. Firstly, is to give the ease of information access to a customer. They can just go onto one single website, one single portal, and they have access to every information that they need to know about Digix. Company, the partnerships, the pricing, where the goal is held in all the different vaults. This is the main case. The second one is allowing someone to be purchasing and buying directly from their own crypto wallets. So ease of information as well as accessibility from their own wallets are two main drivers for creating this whole new marketplace today. Uh, in fact, we relaunched this marketplace about earlier in this month, in February. Uh, and we're running a little promotion right now. We're selling gold at a slightly off market prices. Yeah. So for the readers out there, if you want to check it out, the website is digix.global. It has everything on there that you need, the pricing, the access to create uh, your own account, and of course, a discounted price on gold. That's great, Sean. And now that the marketplace has been revamped, what are the next steps that your team is taking to continue growing the project? Right, so we recognize that there's a lot of new movements in the cryptocurrency space today, especially with the whole new movement of decentralized finance. Working with new partnerships in the ecosystem is, uh, is paramount to us today. We want to get access to allow people to build more integrations with the Go token. It's the main kind of like, um, I would say, behavior they're trying to create within the partners in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And speaking of partnerships, that was my next question. You know, what are the major partnerships that you rely on? And as you continue to look for new partnerships, what are the <coughs> ideal partnerships in the industry that you're looking to achieve? Right. So the main partnership that we have been relying on so far is the exchanges network that we have. So we are currently plugged into the exchanges like Bitfinex, Uniswap, Kyber. Uh, and we want to keep these partnerships going and actually growing in effect as well. So we want to have more and more different exchanges that will be offering DGX as a token to the users out there, uh, notably the top few exchanges that we've been working on so far. The other kind of like partnership that we've been exploring so, uh, is to reach out to borrow lending platforms to allow our token holders to actually stake gold token, to either borrow an interest on them or to allow them to, to receive these gold tokens as a form of collateral in return for capital. That's great. And as you continue to grow, you may also face some challenges uh, that will you'll have to overcome for your growth. You know, what kind of challenges do you foresee in this specific niche market in cryptocurrency that you're going to have to face to reach mainstream adoption? Right. So it's a good problem to have, but gold today right now is trending at a little bit of an all-time high. 
we might have some of the users out there who are looking to purchase these gold tokens and thinking like, oh, I might be buying gold at an all-time high prices. So it's uh, the price movement of itself has been a good and bad thing for us. Good in the sense that, yes, a lot of our existing users have benefited from the entire rise in prices. Um, the downside is that new users would be a little bit more hesitant to get involved. It's almost like the same behavior as like buying crypto itself. Um, a user may look at Bitcoin prices today and think like, oh, it's so much higher than what it was like a couple of years ago. So it's, it's the give and take for now. Makes sense. Uh, but with the economic uncertainties and in the few years, uh, it could be much higher. It could also be much lower. But you know, when people see it at the all-time high, I can understand how they are fearful of buying in. Uh, but you never know which direction it's going to go in the market. We'll see uh, how that plays out. So that's very interesting. And does your company, um, ha besides you know people purchasing the gold tokens, does the the cash flow and the balance sheet get majorly affected by the price of gold, or are you guys fairly hedged against that? Uh, so we're fairly hedged against that because we set aside a set of uh, working capital to actually buy these gold tokens and hold them in inventory. So we don't really have much of a fluctuation in terms of balance sheet with the gold that we hold, uh, but it's been a good ride up so far. Uh, we've been purchasing a lot of gold since the last year, so I don't think it's a, it's a bad effect on any kind of like balance sheet requirements here. That's great. And, and how large is your team right now? And are you guys expanding? I know you mentioned you're looking for more partnerships, but are you also looking for more team members or just more end users? Right, so we are currently at about 21 people at the moment. Uh, we're heavily relying on the developers within the company to build out the different platforms and different features and integrations that we will need going forward. Uh, I would say that the focus right now is not to grow internally, but to grow the network of users and to grow the partnerships that we could get access to. Mm -hmm. Great. And if there are users that are looking to learn more information or to get involved with Digix, what's the best way for them to reach out? Right. So the best place for them to reach out to is on the website itself, digix.global. On that page, you get access to the company's blog, which we have all the latest information. On that page as well, you get access to the social media links, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, where we post all the different promotions, updates to the website, updates to the company even. Uh, and all the different kind of like news and thought leadership articles could all be found on digix.global. Great. Thank you so much for your time, Sean. I will leave those links in the description box below as well for the viewers. And that's all the time that we have for the interview today. But it's been a pleasure learning about Digix. And let's follow up in the near future. Yeah, thank you so much, Ashton.